Welcome back. Welcome back to Minecraft Quest with SRJ26. Uh, last episode I showed you the city and walked along the walls. Now I'm going to show you the uh, uh, the end of the path where the players were walked onto and we're going to walk in and I'm going to show you the uh, west end of the city. So this is the gravel path. And I walked the players, uh, Sir Blockhead, walked the players all the way down this path and they actually ran ahead. Um, he claimed that his legs were sore and creaky from being made of stone and moving for the first time in forever. And so he uh, he just walked, ran a little bit of the way, mostly walked, and the players just ran ahead. Oh, boo. I hate Enderman. Notch, why did you do this to us? Okay, so... We enter the city walls, and you can go either way, and that would go around the the you know the the edge, the, around the city walls, either inside or above, and enter the door. And here we are. This is the west end. This was the first area that I um, that I basically cleared out. My first step was to clear it out entirely, so it's just a wide open plain. Then I lay down sewers, and the sewers were laid down just below the. Um, just below where the roads are. So anywhere that you see a road is exactly where a sewer uh, is underneath. And I can even go in and show you the end of the sewer. I think in here might be an entrance. If it's not in here, it's the one. Yep, there we go. So that will take us down. And, oh. oh no. Wrong tower. Okay, let me get back in. I want to show you just a good look at how the sewers are laid out. Um, just because I, I promised I would go into more detail. So now we're in another tower, and here we go. This is the sewer entrance. Uh, so you see the players have already come through and put in torches and started lighting it up and exploring, which is fine. Um, I actually want them to explore. Um, so basically I made a... Uh, six wide and two deep hole and then another two deep trench and that became the the bed so that we'd have this walkway on the edge and the walkway is not just for uh, looks it's also for uh, mob spawning so mobs would spawn fall in the water and get swept away down to the mob grinder every intersection has um, it's eight blocks from the source block to uh, the intersections, and it's just a vast network. Um, and that's basically all there was to it. There are a few towers that have entrances into the sewers, not many. Uh, a lot of them are just totally cut off. And, you know, you go to, the, go to the tower and there's either no basement or the basement, um, and, you know, the basement doesn't actually open into the sewers. So, let me get back in here and I'm going to walk around and start uh, telling you about what we did here. Um, TRMN124 helped me with a lot of this and basically we, we laid out a uh, grid. We laid out a grid of blocks and then uh, slowly but surely we built houses and we set up some rules that made some amount of sense. For example, you couldn't have two-story tall buildings right next to the wall. Um, because, I don't even know why, because of security or something. It, it seemed to make sense to me that it would be a reasonable security precaution. So all the, all the buildings next to the wall are short. And once you get one block in, then you can have the taller buildings. And we tried to make every house, no matter how small, have something resembling a living space. Um, so I wanted them all to look realistic, even if it was just a little peasant shack. Um, you know, you'd have... Uh, apparently these people sleep right in full view of the street, but yeah, they're poor, you know, what can you do? Um, there is room under these buildings for basements because, as I showed you before, it's six wide, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and so if you were to make a basement under here, um, you would not be in the sewers. You know, you could make a door into the sewers if you wanted to have a way of getting out, but... Um, you know, there is space underneath in case uh, we ever wanted to expand down. And some of the buildings are mansions. The mansions I made uh, a little bit larger. There are two stories, and I tried to make uh, variety. 
Um, so for example, this one doesn't have a balcony, but it has, you know, a nice chest with some random stuff. Um, and I, I would actually sleep in just random houses as I was building the city when it became dark if I wasn't resetting time. You know, you could just sleep wherever you want because no one really lives here. Um, I tried to have each neighborhood have a, uh, a little green area. And when we got the fences, I added the fences in so uh, the little uh, farm animals would be kept in place. Um, each neighborhood has some eateries and I will show you one of those right now. This is the Baconator. So this was before bacon, uh, before chicken and steak. So I made a, a bacon themed restaurant. And so we've just got you know some, some booths and then here's where I guess you order the food. And uh, oh, that's kind of weird. I think someone renovated or did something. Oh look at that. Ha, I guess one of the kids decided they really wanted to live at a place that had bacon. I think I know who it was. I'll bet you it was Draco Wing. Um, so someone decided to take a sh up shop here, which is totally fine. Uh, this used to have uh, uh, some, some tables over here. Um, and the story, of course, is that the, the, the island was abandoned. Um, the zombie pigmen invaded and everyone was killed and Sir Blockhead escaped. And then he led the, the kids back to the island to help reclaim it. Um, that's funny, so this is now the home of, well, it's still the Baconator, but it's probably the home of someone who loves bacon. Probably Draco, Draco Wing. Yeah, that's probably the guy that, that went and decided to take up residence. And so we've got um, mansions galore. Oh, this is the one I was already in. I'm showing you the same one twice. Um, oh, the balcony bookshop. So I also tried to make uh, houses that were shops. Uh, so the concept is that this is a little bookshop, and that's private staff only back here. And when we go back here, we find that it is actually a residence. So someone lives here. They have the little kitchen um, or furnace, as it were. And then we come upstairs, and we have a, a, a bedroom, and they've got a, a balcony up here above the uh, the bookshop. Hence the name, balcony bookshop. So I tried really hard to to give the um, give this part of the island uh, character you know to actually create little fictitious shops and stuff um, and if you feel like I'm spinning you around a lot and you're losing perspective of where we are well that's that's fine um, that's actually by design it was well, not by, by design but it is a pretty pretty uh, busy little place this bends okay I guess Ben had some uh, some creeper damage I would guess um, because it looks like, either that or he really likes sand. Um, but Ben has claimed this house. I'll get out of here. Oh, you, yeah, definitely creeper damage because this, uh, this table is no longer no longer there. Um, let me, oh, did he die? Look at that. Oh, clever kid. That's where that went. Okay, he made a, a, a plate. Excellent. And the sun is setting, but this is, um, neighborhood is quite safe not perfectly safe but quite safe um, good chance we're not going to find any monsters and over here there is a town meeting hall and city archives where the town elders would meet presumably and the city historical archives uh, all very good reads i'm sure all those books and I put a sign out front that said, public notice, do not try to flee the city, we are besieged. So that's a little indication that something was going on. And, you know, of course, the backstory is that the city was besieged and everyone was killed. Before everyone was killed, you know, they were besieged. And so they put up a notice saying, please don't flee because you'll get killed on the way out. Uh, those zombie pigmen, you know, they're, they're nasty. And the last thing I'm going to show you in this, well, a couple more things before I stop. Uh, Ma Fortuna's fortune telling. This this shack, uh, this building had two wool blocks in front of it with a sign saying "closed by order of the town elders" or something. Closed by closed by order for creating a public panic. And I guess they must have taken away the blocks. But the reason is that this is a fortune teller's shop, and the fortune teller. I'll read the signs for you in case you can't see it. It says, have your fortune told by Ma Fortuna. Be astounded. 
Rates are negotiable. Your future is not. Accuracy guaranteed. Satisfaction, not so much. And if you turn around, here we've got all the predictions. The world is going to end. Zombies will invade our land. Sir Blockhead will run away. So all these things came true. Pigs will invade our land. The crypt of the 80 will be defiled. Which is true, of course, because Notch was good enough to give us Endermen, so they defile everything they find by moving blocks. Um, the captive giant is innocent, and you've seen the captive giant in the intro sequence. Uh, zombie pigmen will kill us all, or kill us all, which is true. Obsidian gates, four will appear, and there are four gates around the city, and the nether is real. So the concept is that Ma Fortuna told fortunes out of this little store, and she freaked everyone out by telling them what was going to happen. And the last one I'm going to show you, because this whole section of the city is not super exciting. Ah, do you hear the gurs? Those gurs are from below. Um, yep, the city, uh, I'm surprised people stayed here because they constantly were sitting there listening to the sounds of monsters from below their feet. Um, which is wonderful for the mob grinder, but not so good for... Whoa! Whoa! Oh my goodness, I think this building is excited. What on earth is going on here? Let me see what's happening. I don't know what they did here, but it's rather odd. Uh, that's very strange. So, this is um, another example of the wonder of having people invade your city and take up residence. Uh, someone decided to give this building a, well, a woody, as it were, or, or a nose. Maybe it's uh, like Pinocchio, and then he's got a big nose. Um, but what I came over here to show you was not that um, very strange uh, thing. But um, a little look here at some of the other buildings. I tried to make a variety of architecture. And a couple more shops. We have the Quentin Quiver Archery Supply. And I did this so that the kids would have ready access to, um, there we go, to bows and arrows. All the arrows are gone. The bows are still there. And there were a lot of arrows there, so um, the kids uh, gobbled them up. And the Western Boathouse. This used to be an access point for monsters to come into the city. And I eventually decided, you know, oh, don't go away. That's okay. I don't need you. Um... And I eventually decided I would, I would put up fences and make a boathouse and sort of secure it so that uh, monsters would not randomly wander in and start bothering me, basically, as I was building. And, oh, two doors. Okay. And that is the West End. Um, so next time I will show you some of the more interesting things. I think I will show you... Excuse me, Mr. Sheep. I think next time around I'm going to show you uh, the Crypt of the 80 and the Cathedral, or the Chapel, because that was a pretty cool build. I'm very happy with that. And I'll start telling you about where we hid uh, diamonds. So um, this was yet another step in the building of the city, uh, building this side, clearing out the sewers, putting in a million little buildings to try to make it look as real as possible. A lot of cobblestone, i got to say. Uh, I think if I did it again, I would use a variety of materials, but you live and you learn, you know? Uh, thank you for watching. This has been SRJ26 with Minecraft Quests, and next time I'll show you uh, what's in and under that chapter.